this week on Outdoor Bound TV. We travel to Southeast Wisconsin to take part in the 26th annual Sturgeon Stampede, held each February on Wisconsin's largest inland body of water, Lake Winnebago. This annual winter event attracts sturgeon spearing enthusiasts from all over the U.S. for the celebrated opening weekend of the sturgeon spearing season. Awesome buck. That was a dandy. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Real Deal Mineral, Brew Pub Pizza, Meyer Recreational Buildings, and Colby Chrysler Center. Real Deal Mineral, the results speak for themselves. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lotta Matza Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lots of Matzo Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. At Meyer Recreational Buildings, you'll get a certified building experience where we assure you a worry-free, guaranteed, high-quality recreational building. Designed by outdoorsmen like you, Meyer Recreational Buildings are built with the highest quality American-made materials. Build with confidence. Build with Meyer. My name is Jeff Meyer from Meyer Recreational Buildings. Call me today for a better way to build. Visit our website at MeyerRecreational.com and pick out your design today. When winter weather makes driving difficult, fight back with a newer pre-owned vehicle from Colby Chrysler. Isn't it time you test drive the Ram 1500 Voter Motor Trends Truck of the Year not once, but twice? That's right, twice. Whether you choose a new or pre-owned vehicle or choose our award-winning service department, we want you to feel right at home at Colby Chrysler. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm your host, Kurt Walbeck. And I'm Outdoor Bound TV pro staffer, Trisha bowen Stefan. On this week's episode, I get to take part in a unique event that occurs in only two places in the United States, sturgeon spearing through the ice. These prehistoric fish have been around since the time of the dinosaur, and due to a cooperative effort between Wisconsin DNR and the fishermen around Lake Winnebago, sturgeon spearing is still possible today. So let's head to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin for the 26th annual sturgeon stampede on the frozen waters of Lake Winnebago. Today is the day before opening of Sturgeon Spearing at 2015 on Lake Winnebago. Today's cut-in day, everything is crazy, everybody's running out, hurry up, get all the holes cut. Shanty set up on the special locations, I know there'll be a lot more people coming out in the middle of the night because they don't want anybody to know where they're going to be. Um, just insane chaoticness, everybody's running rampant around the lake. This gentleman just had given me a call and he asked me to saw him in here, that's why he, he picked this spot out himself. He, thinks this could be the hot spot this year. We're just right outside of Wentz here, and uh, it's about eight feet deep here, and, and uh, he thinks this is his lucky hole. It's a great time. Uh, I love getting to see all the different people and experiences. 
and learn more about the sturgeon. Uh, we got a lot of holes cut today. Uh, we cut uh, quite a few in yesterday, like 21 holes yesterday, and we got at least that many more to cut today. Um, just helping everybody out get their shanty set up, and uh, we got uh, roads that we marked out with our West Shore Fishing Club, and we. Uh, had, we were plowing at 5 o'clock this morning, getting the roads all plowed so guys can get out here decent. And uh, we had to move one of our bridges, and the bridge broke. So we had to pull that to shore to get it welded. Um, got a lot of stuff going on. Well, my name is Carrie Stollenwerk. I'm with the Fond du Lac Area Convention Visitors Bureau, and I'm the Director of Sales. Fond du Lac is situated at the base of Lake Winnebago. This year is the 26th annual event is the Sturgeon Stampede Festival. It always coincides with the opening of sturgeon spearing season, which is the second Saturday in February. They'll have food and beverages, even bands that are playing in these tents out on the lake. And it, it just becomes vibrant. Bonfires, fireworks, it has such family tradition and it was a whirlwind of activity because we hosted the World Ice and Snow Sailing Championship. Fond du Lac became a mecca for international visitors as well. A lot to bring out families when at this time everybody's sitting inside looking for something to do. Getting ready to head out on Lake Winnebago for the annual sturgeon spearing season. Today, Valentine's Day, is opening day, and as you can see, the race is on. Everybody's heading out to the lake to get in their shanty and get it warmed up if they hadn't already. Uh, we have 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, so it's pretty cold, but good thing. And for the invention of propane heaters, we'll all stay warm inside our shacks. We're getting ready to get in the vehicle, follow our guide out to where our dark house is, our shanty. We'll get our spears hung and ready in the water, lower our decoys and get ready to spear our sturgeon. This is the fanciest dark house I've ever been in. Dropping our good luck decoy down in the hole. I want to keep it suspended just enough for you to be able to spear it and see. I can always throw it down a little bit further. Get the lights off here. Our expectations for today are to have fun and to hopefully at least see a sturgeon. This is my third year spearing. I have my daughter with me today and we're both just big fans of the comeback story of the sturgeon and what Lake Winnebago has to offer going around the lake and seeing all the art that's involved in this sport. The decoy carvers, there's many of them, very unique. Everybody has a different take on how to make a decoy or what makes the sturgeon come in. So decoy carvers like Mary Lou Schneider, George Schmidt, um, all very iconic in this area. I'm Mary Lou Schneider. I live in just outside of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, alongside Lake Winnebago. Been there for 80 some years, so uh, I like to fish, hunt anything in sports, and love sturgeon spearing, yeah. I always like to, you know, work with wood, and I've got some in the basement, some of my first ones. When I look at them now, I think, oh my. <laughs> but they're more or less like collectors, collector items, you know. I just enjoy doing it, and every year I try to make something different usually go go back to the original, a lot of them. Well, I used to go with my dad, 15, 14, 15 years old, and I did everything wrong of what he told me what to do, you know. Sitting in the shanty, and uh, at noon I had, ate lunch, get tired, so I was laying on the floor and I dozed off, and I looked down and here's, here comes this nice fish, right? right up to the decoy, so. Years ago, they, you know, the, water, the spear would be out of the water because they always said, if the spear was in the water, we need to move it around and make ripples, you couldn't see the fish. 
So and then when the fish come, you're supposed to grab the spear and then just gently put it in the water and then throw. Well, I didn't gently put it in the water. I just let her fly, <laughs> splash, but I got the fish. And that one was 56 pounds. That was my first fish. So then I was really hooked. <laughs> I probably speared about 30, 40 fish. The largest was 107. And then in 90, 96, I got a 94 pounder. That one I had a call for help. I had a lot of help real quick. So Some of them say, oh, there's nothing to it. There's some people, they go out there the first time out, first hour, they get a fish, you know, well, there's nothing to this. But uh, it might be another five, six years before they see something. Um, we were unsuccessful for opening day, but is there any unsuccessful day in the outdoors? But um, we stared down the hole for a good six hours and uh, one baby sturgeon spotted by our host, Carrie Stolenwork. We're going to close up our holes, pull out our spears, but we're going to go up to the shore and we'll see all the successful people and hear their stories, meet up with old friends and maybe make some new ones as well. A buddy of mine was sitting in the same shack as I was, back to back. He was stretching his neck, and all of a sudden I heard this bubble. And I said, you all right? You didn't fall in yet. And the sturgeon came out of the hole. And when he looked at it, time to throw the spear, it was down too far, he couldn't get it. Yeah, <laughs> never, never had seen that in a lifetime. Came out of the hole? Came out of the hole, grabbed some air, went back down. Oh my gosh. Now don't go away because right after the break we have day two on the ice with Trisha and we get a chance to sit down with the founder of Sturgeon for Tomorrow and one of the true pioneers in sturgeon conservation and management. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Rapala, Suffix, VMC, and Otter Outdoors. Hey, you remember when we were hanging out last night? You know, me, you, Gail. That's my girl. <laughs> you guys are awesome. And then you went to bed. I was tired. You were super tired. And then it was just me and Gail. Mm-hmm. Alone. Ah! What? Oh, 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 yeah! It's all in the pause. New Shadow Rap from Rapala. You know, tonight when we do this, I want to say something special. Like an exotic magic word? Exactly. Something like rutabaga. That's a root vegetable. Yeah, you're right. How about this? Abracadabra! I love it. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Always use the best line. Suffix 832. Anything? Not a sniff. You? Nothing. Hey, Ike, what am I doing wrong? Hey, man, try some of these new VMC flipping hooks. They're perfect for pulling big bass out of heavy cover. Thanks, Ike. You're welcome. It's got an epoxy keeper bar for keeping the plastics on there, and you gotta flip it in the cabin. And set the hook! Set the hook hard! You gotta get him out of there! Get him out! And set the hook in real big! Get him out of there! Get him out of there! You got him! You got him! I can't say anything! The new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter feature a new look and unmatched protection from the elements. The fully insulated Pro XT 1200 features a 1200 denier shell built for extreme conditions, while the Thermal Top XT 650 features a 650 denier shell that locks in heat and eliminates condensation. All extreme thermal shelters are built on Otter's legendary roto molded sled and proven oversized square tube frames. The all new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter, built tougher, stronger, smarter. Here are this week's Outdoor Bound TV viewer photos. Day two of sturgeon spearing on Lake Winnebago. 
Um, I didn't have any luck yesterday. We're giving it another try today. Um, as you can see, it's beautiful. The sun's shining. Um, the winds have died down a little bit. Still a little windy, but nothing like yesterday with our whiteout conditions. Um, the clarity of the water is excellent. We can see the bottom in 17 feet of water. Um, I have the magic white mug hanging down, hoping that's going to be the trick to luring in a big old sturgeon for me. So wish me luck. We heard that the sturgeon are swimming a little bit higher underneath the ice. So we only put it about four feet down. We're in about 17 feet of water right now. And I'm not gonna take my eyes away from the hole very much because if I miss a sturgeon coming by, we hang the spear from a hook on top and keep the, the tips in the water. Sturgeon don't have the best eyesight, but they can detect movement. So we keep back, we try not to make shadows, almost like bow hunting, you don't want to have your feet hanging over the edge. And when we move this spear to get ready, just move it very slowly, not try to make ripples. Lift it off the very slight hook up there, give it a throw, and then we start pulling on the rope. Now one of the early sturgeon fishermen of Lake Winnebago, and the man most responsible for convincing Wisconsin DNR officials to attempt private rearing and reintroduction of sturgeon into the Winnebago system is Fond du Lac area resident Bill Casper. When I was eight, I started fishing. I started going out there with my uncle Ambrose Langenfeld. And when I, would, when I turned 14, he gave me his fishing shandy. He gave me all his equipment, his spear, gaff hook, skimmers for skimming a hole and the shanty was complete. First year I fished by myself, I got a 53 pound sturgeon and I've been doing it ever since. When our forefathers came here, they started building dams in the river. They put in 17 locks and dams from Lake Winnebago to the Bay of Green Bay they blocked off all the spawning for the sturgeon. And it was about this very time in 1977, I began to think about what would ever happen to the Lake Winnebago system. Let's say for some odd reason, something would happen to the lake that they wouldn't reproduce or whatever. Um, how could we replenish that crop? was in the entire United States, we did not know how to raise sturgeon in a, in a hatchery environment. Got me thinking that, why not have the fishermen try to do this? Why don't we get together and, and learn to raise these fish? Because I'd been told by the DNR that they have tried it and it didn't work. They could not raise sturgeon. I circulated a bulletin that simply said, we're gonna have a meeting at our town hall and we'll try to decide on whether or not we can raise fish. I had these bulletins, I drove around the entire lake. I wanted to do that while the sturgeon fishermen were still coming off the lake. I made it around the lake. I had a, I had a meeting and 150 fishermen showed up and I invited the, D, the DNR people. Dan Foltz and Gordy Priegel, they showed up. 150 fishermen were in favor of trying to do this and two department people said, it's impossible, you can't do it. You can't raise sturgeon in a, in a hatchery environment. I contacted National Geographics and I said, can anyone in this world raise sturgeon. And they said, Russia has learned how to do it. They were hatching at that time, 75 to 100 million sturgeon every year. I got notice from a gentleman that had a fish hatchery in New London. And he said, Bill, I can, I'm reading about you. I know what you're trying to do. There's a, a professor at Dartmouth College named Bill Ballard. So I got information and found Bill Ballard that very day. In fact, he said, my God, man, where are you calling from? 
He, I said, Wisconsin. I said, Lake Winnebago. And he says, you mean you have sturgeon? And I said, yes, we have sturgeon and we need help. I said, we'd like to learn to raise them. And I said, what would it take to bring you here? He said, it would, it would take a plane ticket for me and my wife. So I had uh, a committee already made up of people that volunteered. There was five of us. I brought Ballard here and had a meeting with the DNR again. They were convinced after a while that we would try it. They required so many things of us and I thought, well, we'll, we'll never be able to do all these things. The following morning, I went to pick Ballard and his wife up to take him to the airport. And he came walking with this written tablet. And he says, here, he said, Bill, guard this with your life. And his wife said, yeah, he spent the whole night writing. Well, he wrote all that was required to raise sturgeon. He wrote everything that the DNR had asked for. And so it, he called it the recipe for raising sturgeon. The first year we were unsuccessful. The next year, the DNR said, we we're gonna try this now. We'll take it to the wild rose hatchery. And we had a 90% hatch successful hatch. We've done work like building spawning sites on the river, putting stone in, riprap in. The, the spawning of the sturgeon right now is unbelievable. I mean, it's the numbers that we've got. We were having trouble with the sturgeon being poached in the Wolf River and this was really hurting our crop of sturgeon. 400 to 500 people volunteer now to go sit on the river and the DNR places the people on different spots where they know what the good hot spots are and watch the river. I said, I hope that I live long enough to see the day when we can successfully raise the sturgeon to a point where we can restock the Great Lakes. I just turned 84 last couple of weeks ago, and guess what? Right now, we're putting sturgeon back into the Great Lakes. This is getting to be a very popular sport. The number of fish that we're allowed to take is never more than 5% of what's out there. I believe this year they sold 13,000 license for people to go on that lake, and, but only about 1,300 or whatever people are gonna be allowed to get a fish and it shuts off. Uh, my fiance was sitting in my double holer and so I got in there and uh, sitting in there and I wasn't in there 10 minutes and all of a sudden a little sturgeon about two feet long went through first. And we all got to see that fish go through and uh, it wasn't not even five to ten minutes. This fish, I didn't even see it. My buddy, he doesn't have it, he didn't have a tag. Said, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's going, I'm like, what? And I look <laughs> over the hole and this fish is right there coming right at me. The fish is going, you know, already going under and I'm like, I grabbed the spear and I just went under it like that and, 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 I, and I hit it and see, I saw I had a good hit on it. It went over in the girl's hole and, and then uh, I told her to start pulling up the decoys and I started pulling back on the rope and then it started swimming around and I said, okay, we're just gonna let it tire out, let it tire out, you know, let it swim around, let it tire itself out and, and it finally calmed down and so I started pulling it up real slow and I said, okay, everybody start taking pictures, here it is, it's in the hole. And uh, everybody's snapping pictures, and I had my son lay down on the ground right next to it, and uh, I took pictures with him. It was really awesome. Good time. Everybody got to see it. It was fun. It was 71 inches and 95.3 pounds. Very exciting. I like to stuff it. I come from Bedford, Wisconsin. 
favorite part about Sturgis Pearing for me is being there with my mom and goofing off in the shack a little bit, having a little good time. Without Bill Casper helping here, I don't think that I would be here today saying this stuff to you guys. Sturgeon numbers are at an all-time high. There's never been sizes that they are right now. The DNR reporting much larger, healthier, mature sturgeon than they ever have in the past. That's all thanks to the people around Lake Winnebago and their pursuit in preserving this natural resource and keeping it here for people of tomorrow. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission, HHA Sports, Titanium Tip Stick, and MBS. This is my life, the weekend warrior. No more production lines or deadlines. This is why I work five days a week. I need speed, power, precision. I expect no less than the best. This is my best. This is my chance. This is my mission. Simple, efficient, powerful. Mission by Matthews. Optimizer by HHA Sports. The Optimizer Light Ultra, voted number one single pin adjustable sight for 10 years running. The Optimizer Speed Dial for crossbows, to the yard accuracy with a single reticle. And the Optimizer Horizon, offering unmatched accuracy from both short and long range firearms. All Optimizer sight systems utilize range dial shoot technology. Ask for Optimizer at a dealer near you. The new Beaver Dam Titanium Tip Stick is the first ice rod with a built-in extendable titanium spring bobber, making it the most versatile ice rod ever. Extend the bobber for ultralight panfish jig, or retract it for game fish or when it's time for travel. It even has a built-in rattling handle to attract fish. It took a while to come up with an ice rod worthy of the Beaver Dam name, but when we did, boy, we nailed it. Since 1999, McCuffsky Brush Service has been specializing in right-of-way clearing for power, gas, fiber optic, cable lines, and railroads. MBS is your complete brush and tree removal company, and we also clear woods roads and food plots. Whether working on residential tree trimming or commercial projects, MBS utilizes the most advanced equipment and environmentally friendly clearing methods available. MBS, clearing the way to reliable energy. Visit our website for more information product and promotional consideration provided for Outdoor Bound TV by these fine sponsors. Hey Trisha, we look forward to seeing you back on the ice there on Lake Winnebago next year. Folks, join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the Midwest, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. All right, Scooter, what's going on there, buddy? Oh, that didn't go very well. <laughs> well, if it keeps going and then goes down into the mud. Hi, Bill. Right. Okay. Ice fishing. Just let it ring. Start over. Absolutely. This was so much fun. Okay, we do that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it is fun. I'll start. Okay, what number lake is this? You want me to do that again? Yeah, it was really fumbly. Mm -hmm.